Team Tay. Can you guys all say Team Tay on three? One, two, three. Yeah. Hi, I'm Marianne. Welcome to Teen Say, where teens can have their say and adults can see where they're coming from. So hi, how are you? I'm good. Good. <laughs> These are human anatomy students from Chantilly High School and we're taking advantage of an awesome opportunity to view open heart surgery today at I know the Heart and Vascular Institute. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> I'm Darla Ferris and I'm the docent for the dome. Okay? Awesome. So are you guys excited? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Why don't each one of you tell Cheryl real quick, how do you feel? Give me like one word. And we'll go around, we'll start with her. Yeah, I'm excited too. Um, <laughs> nervous. I was just curious. Um, oh. Interested in the body. Excited. Excited. I'm excited. Definitely excited. If you look through these double doors here, this is our cardiac rehab gym. This is where they come. Uh, eight weeks after they have their chest opened or a week after they have a heart attack or some type of procedure. And they will get an exercise plan, a diet plan, and they also get heart healthy t-shirts. Now there's nobody to model one in there for you, and I'll show you one in the dome, but you don't get a t-shirt just for coming here, okay? <laughs> Okay, so what they're doing right now, um, Darla is having them take a pretest to test their prior knowledge about hurts and heart disease and things like that. And during the actual surgery, she's going to talk to them, she's going to teach them, and then afterwards they're going to take the test again and see if they've picked anything up. So this is their opportunity to see anatomy in motion, in context. We can do dissections in the classroom, but this is the first and maybe sometimes only chance some of these guys will ever see anything like this. And we might be on the floor? No, I might be on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> she has she has them. <laughs> Just, in Just in case. I said, I don't even look on Grey's Anatomy. I turn around when they do the first oh, cut. Really? Oh, do you? <laughs> Darla, how many times would you say you've ever revived someone during this? Um, about once a week, yeah. And your left ventricle is the workhorse of your heart, and it actually pumps the oxygenated blood up into your aorta. Now off the base of your aorta come these little openings here. They're called osseuses, and they actually allow the blood to flow down into your coronary arteries. Um, so this is your right coronary artery. This is your left anterior descending. This feeds 70% of your heart. So if you have a blockage in, this is what they call the widow maker. If you have a blockage there, your chances of survival are not very good, okay? So anyhow. This woman, okay, she's an African-American, 55-year-old female with a positive history of coronary artery disease, okay? And um, she, came, she came with a history of rheumatic heart disease, which means that that's why she had mechanical valves placed in both her mitral and aortic valves, because she had vegetation on her valves before they even, that's what the, these little holes are here. And anyhow, so they had to replace both the mitral and the aortic valves, okay, with mechanical valves. <clears throat> And then the doctor, uh, Dr. Bongioni, he had to do four years of college, four years of medical school, and then he did five years of general surgery residency, followed by two to three years of a fellowship with a cardiovascular surgeon. The university had to learn how to do operations on every other part of your body except your head and your heart. And then he did a two to three year fellowship with a cardiovascular surgeon. Now, if you want to be a pediatric cardiologist or pediatric cardiovascular surgeon, you have to do two additional years with a pediatric cardiovascular surgeon. Yes. So, the, you see the yellow box over in front of the red trash can-y looking thing? Okay, that yellow box is the center of 
the blood goes into it, spins down, and then they repack it, and they put it in the bag and give it back to the How many of you watch Grey's Anatomy? <laughs> the last three times, like, <laughs> and then they look for it in the heart, and then they follow they look it on that it. black and white yep. screen down here, the transesophageal echocardiogram, so they can see it come up into your right atrium. And then they snake the tube up behind it yeah. so that it's yeah. in. See the long tube Pretty down cool. there laying down there? They're going to put that over top of the white they come up with this stuff? and thread it all the way up into the... <laughs> Yeah. So what that's doing is it's taking all of the oxygenated blood out of that side of the heart, taking it to the machine, um, oxygenating it at the machine, and then the other tube will take it back and dump it into the um, exiting chamber. So, you know, while we're, while we're sitting here, we're, we're realizing this is mortality. Like, this is awesome that we're witnessing them save her. But at the yeah. same token, you know, we could have witnessed something pretty horrible. So it's pretty, I think it's pretty awesome that we've had such an elaborate surgery to witness. And when I watch how great they're doing, it's like the excitement about the medical field that they had over there, you know. So <laughs> I'm Rana. Oh, what do you think of today? Um, I thought it was very fascinating. I mean, I never thought I'd see something like this. So seeing it today really made, introduced me to this whole field of health care. What do you want to share with anybody out there about your experience today? Would, would, should they do it? Um, oh yeah, I mean, I thought I was going to get like really grossed out, and it's not as bad as you might think, so you should definitely, if you have the um, opportunity, definitely see this kind of thing. It opens up like your, your um, mind? Yeah, like about how, what, thing, what actually goes on. Yeah, it makes mm -hmm. it definitely very real. So tell us, you really lucked out today with this surgery. I did, I did. Um, tell us why. What does the surgery include? I'm so, so excited. I've got to see so many things that yeah, mean, yeah. like, wow. <laughs> yeah. So we never know what we're going to get. Um, it's completely random, whatever's scheduled for today, and we will never know until we walk in and see the board. Um, we have come and we've seen all kinds of things. We've seen bypasses and we've seen less invasive procedures, but today happens to be a very exciting procedure. There have been a couple of um, residents and things in and out. Um, they're putting in a pump and they're going to do a double valve replacement wow. and they're in the middle of you know, putting all these pieces in and it's you know hard out and very exciting for the kids. I mean, you know, it's just so exciting to see two, so much. So she's getting two pig valves? Two valves. Mm -hmm. She had mechanical valve replacements for the aortic valve and the mitral valve and those are being replaced with pig valves. And then they're also placing a um, ventricular the ventricular assistance pump. Wow. So that'll come outside the body and help her heart work while she waits to possibly get a transplant or something like that. We heard those pumps run like $180,000. Something like that. Some the kids were money. asking, like, how much yeah. are those things? And the, yeah, that's it's wild. But it definitely. Are a couple thousand dollars a piece. Every yeah, right. <laughs> but it keeps them going. So. We also found out if you're, you know, because allergies are a big thing now in Virginia. We found, and I asked you, so what about it if you're not, allergic to the pig? You will not be allergic to a pig valve because there is no real protein for you to respond to. So. It's just something, you know, <laughs> just in case you have a lot of allergies. Um, so, yeah, so we'll go back in and watch unless you want to share anything Let's else. Let's see more. I'm All right. right. See more yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> they have to butcher three pigs because one pig has one hard leaflet and two soft leaflets. So they want three hard leaflets to make up a human valve. So they send them off, send those three, uh, they butcher three pigs so that you're getting the bait and then we're getting the valves, okay? Anyhow, they send them off to a place where they put that sewing ring on them and that's made of knitted Dacron coated in Teflon. And the Teflon coating will prevent anything from sticking to it, okay? Including yourselves, okay? Now they put molasses in this jar just to represent the amount and color, and then they put cigarette butts and a pack of cigarettes in there so you don't have those in your lungs. Okay? Remember what I said about smoking. Raise your blood pressure, damage your arteries, damage your immune system, and restrict your coronary arteries. But you can't look at someone's heart and say, oh, it looks like they smoked. But the lungs are Yes, the lungs, you can see it. You can see the charcoal deposits on the lungs. How are you? 
Really good. Good. So what's your name? Shay. Okay, Shay. So tell us about uh, what first, What do you want to do when you get older? I'm really keeping my options open. I haven't really decided yet, but I'm interested in the medical field. And I'm, I know, I'm just keeping my options open and trying to figure out. I heard you talking. I yes. Do. You're very interested in a lot of things. You want to tell us a little about what our conversation was about? Um, just about um, like healthy eating, exercise, how that affects the body. And I thought it was really cool coming here and seeing this open heart surgery because you see what um, drastic exactly what <laughs> yeah what drastic measures so many Americans have to take to you know save themselves. And I think if everybody got to see this, that um, you know people have a different perception of what it means to really be healthy and stay active, like how that can affect. Oh. Um, I what did you that, think about chocolate? You thought yeah no I mean just in like elementary school like I kind of just assumed like if it wasn't sweet then it was good for you and when um, we have a, I think like a, a nurse. Who's yeah. The nurse is coming around showing us little bottles of saturated fat and like that just goes straight to your like straight to your body and it builds up and plaque and just really like an in-depth look of how that actually uh, affects your body because you really can't see it on the outside but when you see a heart and you can see it strained and there's a lot of like fat on it and the plaque it's like it's shocking to see that that's what actually happens. This happens to be a Milky Way candy bar and this is <laughs> 11 grams of saturated fat. The same as a slice of pizza. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, but this is a, a regular size bar, but not the king not size. Not the king size, which is what you will get. Not the king size. The old and school, I'm you're going to show tiny bar. <laughs> Half a cup of vanilla ice cream is this much. 7.3 oh. grams. So I got to tell you, things? I eat a bowl of ice cream. Yeah, a half a cup is nothing. That's not even a scoop. That's nothing. Yeah, that's right. No animal products. But everything in moderation, you need okay. and then you have the extra. Just saying. Okay. Hi, um, I'm Kelsey Mari, and I want to be a registered nurse, like one of the ladies in there that's completing or closing the body. Um, I wasn't at all grossed out. I think it's really fascinating what they do, and it's really interesting. Like, you get to witness everything that goes on, like. The system of systems of what they do with the body. The system of the body, yeah. yeah. And I just think like the wow. equipment that they use on the body, like, like, it's there's a lot, but at the same time, it's like you learn to use them. They have different functions, and it's just you know, exciting. It's, yeah, it's exciting. So, so technology is definitely a big, it's a big part in like the medical. Yeah, and it's nice that we can do so much stuff. Do so much of, yeah, all that. And there's like over like 200 or 500 machines like, yeah. for the, just for the body. It's a, I could tell you want to be a great nurse because you're I like do. sparkling. Just I know, with the excitement. yeah, I really like, like it. Ah, like I can feel your excitement. Yeah. So this was a great day? Yeah, it was. It was actually so what, a big part of it. So what are you going to tell mom like, when you go home? Like, what like, would be oh the first gosh, thing you would say to mom? The way they open the body, the way like they like burn. And it was kind of like, well, what are they doing? But at the same time, it's like, that's really how they open it. Like, you, you, you like, see the heart pumping and then the way they, like, separated the skin. I'm Zoom. Um, I thought this experience was very interesting and fascinating. And I think the doctors and nurses deserve more credit for their hard work. And it's very interesting. Awesome. And you went crossed out? I was not first out. My name is Freshta. Hi, Freshta. So, Freshta, can you tell all the teens out there about this wonderful experience you had today at Nova Fairfax? Um, well, at the beginning of the year, I was our teacher told us that we had the chance to do an open heart surgery, and I thought it was a really great opportunity for people, especially because I'm taking anatomy and I also want to study nursing. And um, I don't know I'm pretty sure a lot of people watch Grey's Anatomy, and ever since then, I've been really like into like surgeries and like the medical field and like it's really like inspired me to like help people and like do something that will help the world. So how do you think today compared to Grey's Anatomy? What do you think? Being able to actually see the actual heart surgery, it's it's really it made, real. it made it real, yeah, and it like it made me realize that only like even one person can change um, <laughs> like someone's life, like save their life, or, like you know, just change their life for the better. Yeah. It's great. Well, it's, it's a good experience.
How many of you, I just want to see a show of hands, because how many of you drive? How many of you are going to become organ donors because of this on your cards? A few of them, yeah. And were those people already organ donors? Yes, one, two. Okay, wow. So this significantly changed you guys. First of all, the two things that will kill a patient on the table are actually infection and blood loss. This is Ioband. It's made by 3M. It's a sticky plastic wrap that actually sticks to the skin. It's like flypaper. You know what flypaper does? It hang it in the air and it catches flies. But anyhow, it catches flies. They stick it to her skin wherever they're going to cut into her. And then um, they can, when it seals the germs on the surface of your skin so that you can't, you don't drop the germs down into the surgical site, right? So that's another prevention of uh, infection, right? So whenever you watch these, it's really funny because the kids will be like, why does their skin look so weird and wrinkly? Well, it's because of the paper. The plastic wrap on it. And then at the end, they tear it off and it's funny because when you have a particularly like pale skinned patient, all of a sudden you'll be like, they're so pale because you've yeah. seen the yellow the whole time. Yeah, that's right. So. High cholesterol just means that usually goes along with positive coronary artery disease. So the low density lipoproteins or the bad cholesterol are high, and the high density lipoproteins or the good cholesterol are low. So I call them lousy and happy. Okay? And then this lack of physical activity, she couldn't she wasn't very active because she had that 15% ejection fraction and she can hardly breathe when she lays down. Okay, she has cardiomyopathy so bad. Uh, her heart is just all stretched out, okay? And that's from the hypertension. If you lift weights, your, your muscle gets bigger. Well, when you beat against a lot of resistance, your heart gets bigger. And it's not a good thing because it, it just thickens the walls of your ventricles so that it decreases the amount of uh, blood pumping out of your left ventricle. Okay, does that make sense? Um, do you know, all know who Dick Cheney is? He was our former vice president. Well, he had a left ventricular assist device put in before his heart transplant. And this is a bridge to transplant for her, okay? So anyhow, so they're gonna put a heart pump right on her left ventricle. So what they have to do is they have to have a bridge uh, that goes up here to bypass the uh, aortic valve, okay? So they'll have a, a tube coming from the pump up to the aorta, okay? And that will carry the blood from your left ventricle. As your left ventricle contracts, the pump activates, it will, and it has to be going all the time. And so they had to check out the electricity supply at the patient's house to make sure that uh, the electric company knows that if their power goes out, she probably needs a backup generator, okay? So they'll be very conscious about that because she has to have a power supply all the time, okay? Make sense? So she's going to have that pump attached to the, the wall and she's going to have it activated by the electricity. So okay. she's not going to have the whole server sort of she will have the whole story. Well, thank you, Joyla, for having us here today. And it looks like the kids, they're doing the kids. Absolutely. I can understand that. And you're a great teacher. I have to tell you, your patient and you're a nurse for how many years? For 36, 37 years. Wow. You're changing the world by educating the kids. Are you still nursing actively? No, not right now. I just do this job up here. 20 hours a week, and I love my job. Yes. And you really know a lot. Yes. <laughs> so, and it's, it's, this is open to the public, too. If yes, it is. Wants to come, right? right. Um, and actually, all you have to do is you go online and go to the Nova uh, Heart and Vascular Institute Dome Experience. Mm -hmm. Wow. And you can register through that site, and um, it's a website, and it will actually, you can register through there. Okay. But if you do have someone, a loved one coming into the operating room, you cannot you attend no. that yes. specific That's correct. surgery. That's right. right. Of course, you wouldn't want to. No. Okay, do you want to tell us anything else? Well, this red dress signifies that more women in the United States die from breast, uh, well, no, more women in the United States uh, die from heart disease than any other disease known to man. 
any cancers combined. Okay? Before we say goodbye, can do you want to share anything? Your class has said this has really impacted and changed their lives. So thank you, Fairfax. Thank you, Chantilly yeah. High School. Thank you, Mrs. Corral. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad we can continue doing this, hopefully, for them. And I'm glad that they enjoyed it, and I'm glad they're going to get something out of it. And I wish we could bring more. Um, for anyone who wants to come and can't go necessarily through a class, they do have yeah, ways we just to sign talked up. So yeah, we just talked about that. I definitely That's awesome. encourage students who maybe can't come during school time to look into it the rest of the year or during breaks and things like that, that maybe there won't be a school group and they can come see. And the next thing you want to go to with them is the Cadavers. So whoever out there yeah. can get them in. Get us to the Cadaver Lab, please. <laughs> yeah, we need to go to the Cadaver Lab. <laughs> yay! Everybody say yay! Thank you! Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Marianne Gonzalez, the producer of Dr. Libby's World of Medicine and Teen Say. Today we're doing an awesome special on Get Off the Couch, Shut the Computer. And with us we have Dr. Jim Thompson, the Chief of Pediatric Cardiology at Inova Children's Hospital. That's right. right? Yes. Thank you so much for being here oh, today. Oh, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. If you could tell us anything, um, any good advice for um, people that have kids that are a little overweight at this time and the families are not active. Um, I mean, they obviously have to make that diet change, but how That's do they, right. how about just like starting to walk around the block at I night? I think you, you make a great point. If, if you can do it as a family, that's great. You, like, just start walking, walk around the block. If you don't have a dog, get a dog that gives you an excuse <laughs> to go for maybe longer walks and get out there and just start getting active. It starts somewhere and kids definitely model after their parents. And we're really eager to hear about the Tough Mudder. I believe you're a finisher in the toughest race out there right now. Uh, yes, I am. I, I, it's hard to believe, I know, but uh, yeah, I made it through. That's awesome. How long is the race? It's about 10 and a half miles. It's a running race, but okay. then they also have, the thing that's different about it is they have obstacles throughout the 10 mile course that you have to pass, which are- Like electric eel, I hear? Yes, uh, there's some electricity out there, and as the name implies, there's a lot of mud, so if you're not into getting dirty and wet, then it's not a race for you. Right, yes, and I, I thought, so I have a couple of things. I went out there to check out the race. We got some footage. We okay. talked to Ben, the director of communications for the Tough Mudder, and he showed us all around. It was awesome. So we saw a lot of people go through the tunnel that went underwater. I believe you and I spoke about that. Yes, yes. And well, we're, gonna, <laughs> we're gonna show some pictures of that now while we're talking. Um, tell us about that one. Well, that, that um, I'm tall, I'm six foot five, and uh, it's hard for me to get through a, a narrow tunnel, and you go down into water and then up another tunnel to get out of the obstacle. Wow. And I couldn't move, so you kind of just have to inch your way forward. And, and there, it's, it's, uh, if you're claustrophobic, it's, it's even more challenging. How so. long is the tunnel? Oh gosh, I'd say it was probably about, each of them were about 40 feet or so. Give really? Or Something I was like guessing that, yeah. somewhere, it looked smaller than that. Yeah, oh, no, wow. they're pretty long. Wow, yeah, you definitely can't be claustrophobic for that. So the electric eel, did you do that? Oh yeah, that's the one that, that really got me and actually my friends had a good time with that one. So the electric eel, if you do it right, you can get through without getting shocked. Uh, they're, it's kind of like the, the new take on, dangling. The barbed, on the barbed wire uh, obstacles, but uh, there's dangling uh, electric eels that uh, have electricity <sighs> running through them and then you're in a, a damp, Oh my gosh. Uh, ground that you're going through. So you're in water and, and you know water and electricity aren't supposed to mix. So that hurts? So, uh, yeah, it does. Well, I Is getting, there any way to get through it without? You can get through it if you stay low without getting shocked. And I was towards the very end and one of my friends was getting out of the obstacle and she thought she was through and her leg kicked up and the whole cage oh, with electric no. eels shook. And I got shocked multiple times and I can't repeat oh, what I said at the time on camera. <laughs> And my friends were standing there laughing at me, of course, and, and so we had a lot of good stories about that one. Right. And I believe you all had, we're going to show some pictures of um, the shirts you were all wearing. Yes. Tell us what that said. It said, uh, Dead Men Running. <laughs> and I'm not sure who came up, up with that, but... Uh, and you you're know, all pretty in shape, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. I'm, I'm probably the least well in shape of, of all of my friends, and they, you know, they, they kind of push me along, but... Uh, 
but it's still a challenge. I mean, you can be in really good shape, and this is still a hard race. But the best thing about the course is uh, it's not just physical, it'll test mental grit too. So we've got uh, some obstacles that no matter what you don't like, it'll find a way to play off your, uh, your mental fears. Did you train a long time before you started the race? Well, the, the group of friends that I did it with, we, we tend to run a lot. And How we, many? Uh, oh gosh, on that day, there were probably about 20, and I didn't know everybody because some were friends of people that were there. Other doctors as well? Some other doctors, yeah, a handful of doctors and then our friends. And, um, so you, do, you guys do have time to stay in shape, thank God. Uh, well, we, Hard we, happy, yeah, right? <laughs> you have to. Um, I get up earlier to, to stay in shape. But we usually, we do the 10-miler every year, and oh. we had done the Odyssey Relay a, a few times, so we'd been in very good running shape, decent running shape to do the 10 miles. But then right. you throw in the obstacles, and that's a little bit harder, and you need more upper body strength, and I don't have a lot of that. So... You know, we did a little bit of training, but just doing, if you do some push-ups and uh, sit-ups and have good core strength and you can run, people can do it. It's a challenge, but yeah. just about anybody could do it. And then I believe one of the benefits of the race um, goes to wounded warriors. That's correct, yeah. That's awesome. That is awesome. And, and they... They carry they, that huge log? Yeah, and they stress that at the beginning. There's a big, it's uh, very inspiring, and they have like a drill sergeant type guy who's at the beginning with all the waves and giving a pep talk and everybody's screaming and yelling. Yeah, yeah Bart, you got it! Come on! Holy oh, oh. Breathe! Body. You got it! You got it! You got it, yeah. you got it baby! Oh my gosh, you're done! It's all downhill now, come on! You got a few more, a few more! One more swing! Come on, Bart! Swing like a monkey! Yeah! So from the heart aspect, is it bad if they do it, you're like, oh, <laughs> is it bad if people do the race, say in October, um, they're going through the cold water and then they're running, they're sweating, they're straining, and they're still out in the cool air, is that bad it's not, for the heart? No, it's not bad for the heart. Now, obviously you have to listen to your body and you don't want to get frostbite and things like that, but, right. but they're, you know, they, they, have a big emphasis on making the the race safe and it's certainly not unhealthy for your heart if you train for it appropriately and you're cleared by your physician to do the race it's actually great for your heart to get out yeah, there and exercise do you have paid medics out here because i know you guys have medics we've out got here, a, right? we've got a, a good support yeah. staff out yeah here. an incredible medical staff we've yeah. partnered with uh, lots of different ALS, uh, ALS uh, EMT uh, rescue divers we've got a really strong network of some of the top safety experts so they come with you they're on your team they, they, we, they'll travel by different events so we'll use different regions but uh, we're always staffed up the same way for uh, an event this size so I'm really fortunate to partner with some thought leaders well. hey, I ask you the forbidden question so um a lot of injuries on these courses? Uh, you know, for, for an event our size, we're incredibly proud of our safety record to date. We've had more than a million participants. Um, and on a day like this, you know, we'll see a couple rolled ankles, a couple shoulder injuries. How many are out here today? Uh, you know, today it's a Sunday, so it's a little bit smaller. We've probably only got around 4,000 people. But yesterday we had closer to 10. Uh, 10,000. Yeah. And I feel that having a, you know, if you're looking to get in shape, what I recommend to a lot of people is to find a race, even if it's a 5K, not necessarily Tough Mudder, if that's right. your first, <laughs> your your first thing. But if you're looking for, for a goal to get through, and particularly if you do it with friends and you can kind of all work together to get in better shape, I think that gives you something to work towards and actually motivates you more. I did speak to one of the gentlemen out there who actually had heart surgery and he was doing it and I was surprised so I know you can avoid certain obstacles um, if you need to yes. so if you want to just do the run like I spoke to a law student um, who said I just wanted to get away from my books go out there I run every day and just do it and just really be a part of the excitement because it was such a challenge and she tried some of them but so the heart patient I spoke to uh, I guess that was the concept of getting off the couch getting right. active or getting away from the books at that moment um, the heart patient I spoke to said his doctors had said he should avoid certain obstacles. The first obstacle, and if you're not awake when you show up to the race, that'll, <laughs> that'll wake you up. But it's, yeah, yeah, it's essentially a big tub, or it's, it's actually, I think they use a huge um, a dumpster that they oh. fill with ice water. Ice, ice water. Ice water, and so it's oh. 32 <laughs> degrees. I mean, it's like, you know, you're up in the Arctic uh, Ocean or something, you know. Oh, my God. And there's um, a barrier. So to get through, you actually have to fully submerge. You can't just jump in and swim across, which is hard enough, but 
you know, um, it, like I said, it definitely wakes you up. So, I mean, it, so obviously you'd prefer to do the race in the summer or the warmer months versus like, I know the Tough Mudder has um, a really challenging one. I'm gonna talk to somebody else about yeah. it after I speak to you. Um, that's like 24 hours and so forth. Um, I guess it's the toughest mudder. So it gets yeah. challenging. It gets even more challenging. There's, there's they're, always they're trying more of a challenge. If, <laughs> if it's not hard enough for you, they know how to make it harder. That's, that's for right. sure. But it's, it's a great, it's a feel good race. And you know, it's a, they, they try to stress that it's a team event. It's not a competition so much that you know, it's not like the, the, the Army 10 Mile or other races where there's a winner. They do right. it in waves and people just go through and you're, the, the, they like to have people go in teams. Uh, we'll go off in the same start waves, the same sort of set groups every time. Oh yeah, yeah. explain the start wave to us. Sure. So they don't all go out every, at once. No, every 15 minutes we've got a group of about 300 people to go um, so we're able to really control the course well and look at making sure that we don't have lines that are off and the people are really going through in a way that's enjoyable for them. And you're really supposed to help other yeah. people on the course, because a lot of the obstacles, uh, depending on who you are and your level of fitness, you can't do by yourself. You have to do it with teamwork, and like there's some barriers that you have to climb over. We have a picture of this woman in a tutu that we're going to show. Um, she actually did color in motion, and um, that's exactly what she said. But she got out there, she wanted to train for something, and just started running, and then she wound up running, walking, running, walking. Yeah. <laughs> um, and a lot of people walked color in motion. So either way, they're getting out there. But she said, I'm going to train now, and I'm going to work towards next year being able to actually run it with no that's problem right. and do it in less than 30 minutes or something. So that's right. That's what we, what we had spoken about, that you were eager to get people off that couch and out there being heart happy. And that's right. I think getting out there, it, it can inspire you. And even if, you, like you said, if she starts out walking the first race, then you see other people running. And sometimes you go to these races and you see people that look like they're not in the best shape in the world, but they're doing it. Right. And that's inspiring as well. And I think, well, if they can do it, I can do it. And then you kind of push yourself more and more every time. Right. Um, so are you familiar with the col uh, with Color in Motion? I, I haven't done it, but I've heard, heard about it. It sounds like a really neat race. I think I'll have to do it. Yes, it's exciting. The whole family can go out there. That's right. Your pediatric patients can go out there. Um, it's wonderful. We saw women with strollers. Um, a lot of people wore costumes, just like at the Tough Mudder, uh, which is nice. They come up with the theme. We had superheroes and all that good stuff. But what I liked about Color in Motion is everybody could get out there, walk it, run it, and there was a lot of fun. There were so many people that were in their 50s celebrating birthdays. I mean, what a way to celebrate a birthday! Take the whole family out, you know. And even if you could get all the cousins, like you know, together and have a group of like 20, 30, it's exciting. And they're throwing paint at one another. Are you guys having fun? Yeah! Are you all related? Yeah! yeah. So again, they have to shut that computer, get off those iPhones. My That's gosh, right. the world is so technical, it's yeah. ridiculous. Well, then, and you know, the American Academy of Pediatrics. We can't push a button on the computer, though, to exercise, though. No, that's, that's right, not yet. <laughs> Although People, we have Wii Fit. <laughs> right, and hey, if that works for you, great, <laughs> what, whatever it takes. But uh, you know, the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends uh, two hours or less of what they call screen time a day. Phones, computers, video games, TV, less than two hours. And the concept is, is that if kids don't have that other electronic device that's drawing their attention, kids will be kids. They'll find something to do, and usually that involves going outside and running around. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow, what are your names? <laughs> what are your names? Ava, Sophie. What's your name? What's your name? Elizabeth, Gabby, Shannon, Sarah. All right, how old are you guys? And how old are you guys? Wait, I'm eight. Eight. I'm ten. I'm eleven. Thirteen. I'm turning nine. I'm ten. All right. Is this mom? What of the mom? So how'd you guys hear about the race? This was done by their um, riding trainer, uh, who's with uh, who runs Somerset Farm, and she's uh, these are all horseback riders, and she signed us all up. All right. Awesome. Did you have fun? Yeah. yeah.
looks fun. You having fun? Yeah, it's oh. my first one. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, running with my son and my sister. Oh, that's awesome. How old's your son? 11. Hey. Oh, hey. <laughs> They also have a lot of teamwork going on because they have to help each other all the time. Even people that you didn't know, you kind of feel like you're going through the race together. So. Oh, that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. And they have a big party afterwards, right? Yes. yes they do. <laughs> and they have bonfires set up. So. Uh, I didn't see any bonfires, but we went pretty early in the day. I think that was so, to warm know. up from all the Pro ice water yes. and being soaked yeah. and chilling. Um, I'm not too old, but still, even you know, back before all the computer. Uh, the computer waves and the high-tech stuff. I mean, we were outside every day yeah. till dark. I know, isn't that crazy? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. My kids are like, what'd you do? Well, we walked around. We played we... kick the can, <laughs> we played tag, hide and seek, whatever. I mean, that's all active yeah. stuff. And I've been fortunate. My kids have been very active from childhood. They, they go out and they run around with their friends all the time. Right. And you know, the other thing is um, when you hear these parents um, stereotyping their, well not stereotyping, but so they have their child that's the super soccer or basketball player or baseball player. Yes. And then the kid has practice, say, one and a half, you know, one and a half hours a day, you know, but then on the days there's no practice, the kid's not doing anything, which isn't too, too healthy. And, yeah, you want, you want and one and a half hours isn't really a lot if they're going out there, you know what I mean? And these kids are like, oh, I just played a game. So what? Yeah. You can be out there for five hours on a Saturday in the olden days. You That's know, right. not one game is going to make you have to go home and rest. <laughs> That's right. And, and you, know, you, you, we recommend actually at least an hour a day of what we call aerobic activity, getting your heart rate up, running around. And, uh, you know, in today's busy world, that is hard to do for some people. Yes, it definitely is. So we have to get them off the couch and getting active. Thank you so much for being here today. Oh, you're welcome. And uh, hopefully everybody will get out there and get active. And uh, we won't have to have heart issues. <laughs> That's right. So get off the couch, shut off the computer, get active. Well, I can tell you, this engineer, uh, Mike Phillips, definitely believes that. Um, I believe you've done the Tough Mudder, one of the most challenging races that I've seen with all the races we're going to cover. Um, I, I, got in, I started slow with a smaller event that was a, a 5K obstacle course race. The one I did first was called Run for Your Lives, and there are zombies chasing after you. <laughs> wow, and, uh, another challenge. <laughs> it, it was on my birthday. It sounded like such a fun thing to do. I was not a runner when this started. Where is that um, one? Can kids do that one too? Uh, not that particular one. Oh. No, I had such a great time doing that, and it was the first time I'd done anything like that before. And I thought, wow, I want to do more of this. What can I do next year? And uh, Only so, one a year? So. Well, no, this was in the fall when I did that one. So it was okay. kind of the end of the season for outdoor running events. And uh -huh. um, so I started looking at other things and talking with friends and we found out about the Tough Mudder. I was like, that sounds amazing. Let's try that. And uh, so that was one year Any later. Any military background or anything? Not for me, no. Okay, go ahead. And uh, <laughs> so decided, okay, that was gonna be my goal for 2012 was to do the Tough Mudder. And so I did a few other events working up to that, uh, trying to build up my endurance in order to, be, to feel like I was ready for that event and, uh, and had just such an amazing experience for me. Did you train um, first other than that one race that you did? Did you start cha training and running every day before you did the Tough Mudder? Not every day, but, uh, but I definitely did start to build up my, my running. I started back in the you know, late winter uh -huh. running and, and Daily. And, and increasing the distance over the course of the summer. Um, so I did one called the um, Rebel Run in the middle of the summer that uh -huh. was nine miles, so, wow. you know, which felt like a good interim distance to kind of work up to that. You know, the Tough Mudder can be anywhere from 10 to 12 miles. Okay. So, so you just started out with, a, with a, what, first the 5K, 5K and then the nine mile. So yeah. 5K is 3.1 yes, 3 3 miles. miles. Right. The thing that to me sets Tough Mudder apart from the others is they really do focus on that teamwork aspect of it and working together so that everybody can achieve this goal of theirs. Um, one of the things that that exemplifies so you that for me. when they want to lay down on the ground and just like <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, you inspire so, them. <laughs> so one of the ways that they do that is unlike the other running events that you will, will encounter, they don't keep track of your time at all. That's nice. So it's just get out there and try to finish. How long does it take? So, typical would be around four hours. 
something or like that, hour. average. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So um, it depends on your, your background and how much you've been a runner before. Uh -huh. um, some people you know, are regular runners and decide they want to add the obstacle aspect. So um, as far as the Tough Mudders go, so tell us, did you avoid any obstacles? No, I've done every obstacle every time. Okay, um, is there I, one at least, that... I've at least tried them. Uh, so tell us so. about the electric eel. Now that you've been <laughs> there for five times, can you get through it without getting shocked? Because I heard a military man say, he, he said, wow, I think this one just says, I have to prove something. <laughs> I don't know to who, because it hurt. <laughs> yeah, it does so. hurt. And uh, that's <laughs> so the one. So why do that's it? Why not walk did... around it? I don't get it. <laughs> That's not what I signed up for. You well, know, that's for me, you know, I've signed up for this challenge. That's why I'm there. Right. And so to then skip something that I can do, but it's just going to be difficult. No, I, well, you're I'm going to try, try it. Yeah. So tell us, did you master it? Uh, well, no. <laughs> there, I, I, in my opinion, there really isn't a way of getting through there without getting shocked. Really? Uh, now maybe that's evolved, you know, over the years, right. and now they've got the, the. What's the voltage? Do you know? Ten thousand volts. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And it, it hurts. It hurts every time. Yep. Yeah. And and I've yet to make it through any of those without being shocked. So as a um, mechanical engineer, I guess you would say that's pretty safe. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, it's because it's uh, not to get too technical here, but it's DC voltage, so it's not like the you know stuff coming out of the, the wall in your house. It's it's the same hardware they use for electric fences at farms. Ah, oh, okay. And, uh, okay. So what, it, what it, the effect on me is that it just locks up all the muscles that it's passing through on the way to the ground. You know, so oh, those wow. muscles just, it's like, like a cramp. If you, uh -huh. I'm sure probably everybody's had a cramp at some point. Right. You know, you've had that feeling where the muscles just stop working. And wow. so when you're trying right. to do something active at that time, it's a real difficult thing to, to keep moving when those muscles just stop working. Right. So electric eel, maybe not so much, but in particular, the last obstacle is always electroshock therapy. Oh, and wow. that's where you're trying to run through the same sort of electrodes and they oh, have that's mud. that's what I'm thinking of. Okay, yeah. where they're hanging down. They're hanging down. Oh, okay, and that's not the electric eel. That's it's what electroshock that? therapy. Oh, okay. And they have obstacles in the mud plus mud. And so it's already a difficult place to run anyway. And wow. now you're being shocked while you're doing it. So, wow, wow. Yeah. The, um, the one I did in the spring, I got hit a number of times passing through there and, and lost my um, balance really? each, you know, a little bit more each time. And by the end of it, I just face down into the mud and crossed the finish line, just completely in caked mud. head to toe in mud. <laughs> and your theme, by the way, which one did you wear your costume at that For I the saw Sunday. you? For the Sunday? Oh, right. And you were the... I was Max, Max from Where the Wild Things Are. So That's I had awesome. Max's wolf suit on. That's we're right. going to put that up right now mm -hmm. as we're talking. They can see you. You looked mm -hmm. great, really great. Um, I'm sure all the kids will love that. You can wear costumes, anything you want to. That's sure. awesome. It's, uh, it adds a bit of challenge, or yeah. it can, depending on what your costume is. I mean, right. I see people in superhero costumes. and Oh, yeah, because you, know, you still any, have to do you know, the obstacles. But, uh, you know, so some costumes are maybe a little better suited for the event. but. What's a healthy snack to have before you start running or after? Uh, Should you do a lot of protein? One thing that I've taken away from this is to not have a, a big meal anytime before these events, because then you've got all that food just in your stomach and bouncing around as you're out there trying to run, and that's really hard to do that. Right, as so my I stomach tend, sits here and growls. <laughs> <laughs> so I tend to uh, move toward um, smaller meals that are very dense in calories and, and protein so that I get some, some fuel, especially for something like a Tough Mudder where it's a- Dense it, in protein or? Yes, so, okay. so um, a lot of nuts, whole grains. Um, so a typical meal for me before one of these events might be a, a bagel with some peanut butter on it to get some oh, good protein from that okay. and the carbs, uh, maybe a fried egg, okay. um, oatmeal, um, th things like that that are, um, are good, huh. you know, unprocessed whole grain foods with uh, you know, a mix of, of carbohydrates and, and protein. And then during the event, I found that I really need to, to keep fueling my body because when you're moving at that intensity for so long, your body will use up all the energy you have in it. And uh, so I now use, um, the ones I like are these cliff blocks, which are oh. um, a, like a gummy 
a carbohydrate source and I can easily eat those while I'm running and continue to fuel my body without getting, you know, that the discomfort of eating a, you know, food while you're running. Right, so, right. And, and you most drink of, a lot of water. I drink a lot of water. How I do. How about Gatorade and all of that? I actually don't use a lot of the, the sports drinks. Okay. Um, what I often do Simple water. is, um, well, I do sometimes put a little bit of salt in there because in warm weather in particular, your body, you're sweating, you're getting rid of all that salt and your body can't take in the, the water if you don't have enough salt in your body. How old is your dad? 65. And he's in shape? He runs every day? He, he's in shape. Or he's going to yeah, get He's in not shape. a runner. He's going he, to he, start. He, he hasn't, yeah, he hates running, but he's going to do it. My dad's not a runner, but he's a swimmer. So he's, ah. he's swimming several days a week, and my, my grandfather, likewise, would swim a mile mo nice. most days of the week up into his 70s, I think. He was, I'm not sure when he stopped, to be honest, and uh, he's 90 now, but, um, wow. but he swam for a long time, and that was his exercise, because so that's, that's what he enjoyed. So there's so many opportunities out there, just find something that you like. It's always busy. Yesterday was just a longer day, so just hopefully uh, you can come out and try the event for yourself next time. There you go. Have you guys on course. Awesome. And you get free sunglasses. Oh, nice. Nice. <laughs> yes, you have to. It's awesome. And let's see, do they say it on the side, turn around that way? I don't know. Yeah, yes, they yeah. do. <laughs> oh my god, I don't know. <laughs> That's great. And they're throwing pink socks and stuff? Yeah, they were throwing tons of swag. At the very beginning, yeah, everybody was dancing and they were like throwing colors and they were throwing socks and they were throwing more colors. It was, it was so much fun. We missed all that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We started out pretty early. Pretty early? Okay. It was great. What are you going to do the rest of the day? Sleep and eat. Sleep and eat. Maybe take a shower. I heard some people are going to keep their colors on all weekend. Oh, really? That's gross. I'm just throwing that out there. I plan on showering today. Does it come off? Do you know? I hope so. I should. Yeah, I you better so. hope so. I hope. <laughs> and I think being active will help us stay around a lot longer. I so, think so too. yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here. It's been a pleasure. And to all of you, I hope you find something that inspires you and makes you want to get out there and uh, causes the adrenaline rush like Mike has for the Tough Mudder and I have for Color and Motion. <laughs> um, get out there, get active, and uh, we hope to see you soon. And if you think of any great things you want to share with us, email us, mdocgonzalez at cox.net. Take care.